There was a prominent Catholic author here on Long Island who years ago used to write all the time. I used to read these things in the Long Island Catholic. And every time I read them, I would get a little irritated because I was like, I don't know, this doesn't sound right to me. There's something amiss in this. But week after week, there would be a thing in there and, and I'd read it and, and I'd like scratch my head. I'm like, why are they giving this person this platform, this Catholic platform to basically spread what seemed to me to be heterodoxy? It was not Catholic at all. As a matter of fact, it was one of these things where as you read it, you start to say to yourself, well, this is the exact opposite almost. Now, we have to date ourselves back a little ways because this goes back, I was doing this in the 80s. So if you recall, like in the 60s, the late 60s, the 70s and the 80s, it had kind of become fashionable in Catholic circles to basically question church teaching. In fact, it became so popular amongst theologians that debates would start to break out over things that pretty much was a settled doctrine. And yet these public conversations began happening all over the place. And by certainly by the 80s, it was very fashionable that like, you know, if you went to a cocktail party and there was someone introduced to you as a Jesuit, you could be sure that that Jesuit was not going to say anything at that cocktail party about what the church teaches on things like, say, contraception, abortion, anything, really. They would pretty much have been the kind of people that would have been like, oh, yeah, the church is out of touch. I'd had an opportunity at one point to meet this person. And we actually exchanged email addresses because I really wanted to try to figure out where she was coming from. What, what was this all about? You, you've got this platform and you keep saying these things that are opposite of what we should be teaching our people. And in the course of a, many exchanges, there were quite a few of them between us, all these things that she kept trying to propose, I kept saying, but that's not what the church teaches. That's not what the church believes. That's... So when it came to things like married priests, women priests, contraception, all of these different things, she was almost saying the exact opposite a lot of times. I finally said to her at one point in one of the emails, I just made it very clear, why don't you just leave the Catholic church and go to one of those churches out there that do all of this stuff? And the reply that came back blew my mind. Oh no, I love the church. I would never leave the church. To which I replied, what church do you love? Because you don't love the church as it is. You love the idea of the church. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, that era hopefully has come to an end. I don't think it has. If we see what's going on these days with certain discussions that are going on at high levels, we have to start to listen up to Jesus Christ. We have to start hearing his voice speaking to us. The era of division within the church was so damaging and so, I think, unnecessary that it's left us in a position today where we have to ask ourselves, what do I really believe? You sit here, I presume you believe in Jesus Christ. Is that a safe bet? Good, because if you don't believe Jesus Christ is the son of God, we really have to have a long conversation like I had with this woman. But what about the rest of it? What about the package, if you will? I remember the first time as a priest when I got to receive someone who was a Christian into the Catholic faith. And that person had to make a very clear statement to enter the Catholic Church. And it was basically to the effect of, I profess and believe all that the Catholic Church professes, teaches, and believes. And the first time I did it, it, it kind of just went past me. But as I began to think about it and I said, all that the Catholic Church teaches and believes. And I would say to any person back then, do you really believe in all of the church teaching? Do you really accept all of what the church believes and teaches and says? Because that's a pretty big word when you think about it. Three letters, but it's a pretty big word. When you think about all, are there things that maybe you personally disagree with in the church? This woman's argument kept coming back to the same thing over and over again. I'm in touch with reality. The church is out of touch. Are there things that you think the church is out of touch on? See, this, this has to be a challenge to us because the church didn't just wake up one day and say, I just want to make people's lives difficult. I just want to annoy people. And there's such a depth and beauty to what the church professes and teaches and believes. 
there was a priest. I, I'm, I'm one of those kind of nerdy priests. I like to go listen to other priests on Sundays. So I would go on the internet and, and I found a couple of really good priests that I like to listen to. So a lot of times on Sundays or Mondays, I might listen to another priest homily just so I myself can be fed a little bit because here I stand, I, I preach to you, but sometimes I need to hear something. And there was this priest at the end of July. His name is Father Mark Beard. Father Mark Beard was from uh, down south. He's like Louisiana. So he had the, the Southern Baptist kind of sound to him. He had this fire in his voice and this, you know, and the, 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 the alls and the, and, you know, and, and he was great to listen to. This particular homily, he, he entitled, On the Fence. Why are we sitting on the fence? What is it about being Catholic that we're not all in? And when I listened to this homily, I'm like, wow, you can look it up. He's had 100,000 hits on it already, probably a lot more by now. And he's on fire. I mean, you're listening to him and you're going, he's got it. He, he's hitting the nail right on the head. You got you to get off the fence, Catholics. We've got to stop being so wishy-washy, trying to keep one foot in the world and one foot in the church and thinking that we're going to win a hearing with God someday when we get to explain why we didn't defend the right to life, why we didn't stand up for the, the, the child in the womb or the elderly that are going to be put to death, why we didn't try to explain to other people that this is a grave moral evil, that this will keep your soul from entering into heaven. Because make no mistake, we're hearing it a lot in the coming weeks. There will be a judgment and you will have to account for not only yourself, but as we heard in the first reading, others as well. If you do your part and they reject it, so be it. But we're responsible. And I would say, and I pray that I never become a bishop because they got it far worse than I do. I just get you. Bishop Barris gets the entire diocese. He's got like the 1.5 million Catholics that he's going to have to answer for. I only, I only have to worry about you, thanks be to God. You make it easy for me. I, I like that. But there's going to be a judgment. And in that judgment, it's not going to be where you get to question God on why, why, why did you say contraception is immoral? Why, why do you say that we have to go to church? That's, come on, that's ridiculous. Why did you say? I can go down the list of a lot of those things that many Catholics are on the fence about. That I, really, I really hear the church, but I don't believe the church. And that, I think, is something that's very important for you and for me to grapple with. I'm not saying we have all the answers, because we don't. When we say that word all, I believe all that the church teaches, all, well, does anybody here know all of it? I'm a theologian, I've got a, a doctorate in theology and there's still things that I'm learning. There's still things that I'm figuring out. There's still things that I'll read and think like, oh, that's where that comes from. Oh, wow, I never realized that. This priest, Father Mark Beard, gave that homily, and I walked away from it sharing it with people. I said, you got to hear this. you got to hear this guy. He's like fantastic. Two days later, he died in a tragic car accident. And I said, if I ever give a last homily, I want it to be that one. He was so, he was so good. Look it up. It's called On the Fence, Father Mark Beard. You, you'll see it. He, 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 when you listen to it, you're going to be like, he has that southern charm. So he can hit you like, you know, between the eyes, and you feel like he just complimented you. It's like, wow, you, you know, it, it's a beautiful thing. But it's a challenge for you, for me, and I, I'm going to say for anybody who professes Jesus Christ in the Catholic Church, to figure out who we are and what we truly believe. You know, there's a couple of things that have happened in the Catholic world out there that are pretty good secrets. And one of those good secrets is a guy like Father Mike Schmitz. We all love Father Mike Schmitz. If you listen to Father Mike Schmitz in the Bible in a year, you can't help but like him. I mean, he could take some very dense and thick and difficult passages of Scripture and then gush over it in such a way. It's like, wow, that's, that's really cool. But nobody really, everybody's got the Bible in a year. Everybody wants to listen to the Bible. But how many of us are listening to the catechism in a year? Listen to the catechism. You can start today. You don't have to wait for January 1st. You can start today if you're not doing it. He took this catechism. See, I go back to the, to the era of the 60s and the 70s when priests got into the pulpit after Humanae Vitae came out and openly defied the teaching and were vindicated because the Pope reinstated them after their bishops suspended them. This era of rejecting church authority was very tenuous for a while. And a guy named John Paul II became the Pope. You remember that back in the 70s? 
And what does he set out right away? He set out by trying to help people to accept Jesus Christ, to see the beauty of the church. And he began to quickly understand that there was a lot of heterodoxy out there. And so one of the things that he did is he commissioned that a new catechism be made. A beautiful summary for you and for me to be able to pick up and to say, what do we really believe? Now, it's not a real page turner. I'll, I'll be the first one to admit it. And again, it's Father Mike. So sometimes you'll listen to a thing and you go, huh? And then he'll start to explain. You go, oh, that, I get it now. He's great. So please do me a favor. Pick up the catechism in a year. That was John Paul's answer, if you will, to all of this wishy-washiness that was out there. No, this is what we believe. This is what we teach. Here, take it and understand it and appreciate it because it's so powerful, it's so beautiful. And he covers the catechism beautifully and he has guests on every now and then to help us understand when we're going, now, now we're going into this section and in this section, this is what you're gonna hear about and be prepared for this and understand. Well, well done and well worth your 20 minutes a day to just hear what the church actually says and why she says it. So that we can no longer just sit there and be straddling the fence and saying, you know, oh yeah, Jesus, I, I, I'm like that first son, you know, I, I, I give good lip service to you, Lord, but I'm not really listening to you, Lord. I'm not living it out, so to speak. So when you go beyond the threshold of this building later on, will you still be Catholic? And that means that you believe all and accept all and want to share with others all that the church teaches and believes and professes. And if you haven't got the all, don't worry about it. Keep striving, keep learning, keep spending time listening because it isn't that complicated, but what it requires is our engagement. And so I pray that we can be like what St. Paul describes, together unified in our belief, together unified by listening up right now, hearing the words of Jesus Christ, hearing the words of the great St. Paul, hearing the prophets of the Old Testament calling us to a higher holiness, to a greater sense of God, that we have a beautiful relationship with our Lord and Savior to the point where we gush like Father Mike does, where we spend our time getting excited about things that should seem very distant, but aren't. They're very near to us and very real to us. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I encourage you today, find out exactly who we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to believe and how we're supposed to believe it. Because with that knowledge, then we can go before the Lord one day at that time of judgment and say, I did know you, Lord, and you knew me because we had a very powerful and loving relationship with each other and we honored each other, especially I honored you by my way of life. I heard you and I did it. I didn't just say yes, I heard you and I did it. Go do it. God bless you.